Hey, welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Huynh Thuệ Dao. I'm Chiu Ki Chen. And today we are speaking with... John Hofford and uh, Nicolas Rod. And we're actually really lucky today because, well, we have a couple of very special guests. And yeah. actually, it's kind of extra special because now you have the both of us on screen, which you don't Yeah, usually yet. just one of us. Yeah. But uh, Nicola and John, I guess, depending on, I don't know which order you want to go in, but uh, where are you based, where do you work, and how did you get started in Android? Well, basically, I um, worked on, uh, we were based in, San, in Mountain View, mm -hmm. and we work on Android and Constraint Layout. Be before that, I worked on GE. Mm -hmm. I, I worked at, at GE working in medical imaging. And then together, we've been together for about three years, four years almost, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, on everything from the photo editor to the to robotics, uh, the vector drawables is something I did by myself, and <laughs> I didn't do it with him. Um, we worked a little bit together on shadows. Nicholas? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, for me, I. Uh, I started to work on Android uh, quite a long time ago, actually, uh, um, 2008, I think, uh, on the browser, on the Android browser, you know, when it was not Chrome, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, yeah, implementing the hardware acceleration and stuff like that on Honeycomb, our wonderful release for tablet. Yeah. Um, and uh, after that, I worked, uh, when John joined um, Google, we worked on this uh, application uh, that was in, in the gallery application, like the photo editor, mm -hmm. it was quite fun. After that, we uh, you know worked a little bit on those robots things and uh, asked you know John to <laughs> to come help. Uh, that was uh, interesting as well. And uh, and the last thing we've been working on uh, um, for this last you know, year and a half maybe it's a constraint layout and it's fun yeah. as well. But lots of work uh, still left to do. <laughs> and that's what we're going to talk about today: constraint layout. Yeah. So maybe like for anybody who doesn't quite know what constraint layout is. Can so can can one of you like kind of give us like a high level overview of what sure. it is? Sure. Um, well, so the I guess what's interesting and sometimes hard to to really define uh, about constraint layout is you know it's actually both a UI builder um, and a new layout for Android, and uh, it's sometimes difficult to really you know separate the two of them. But actually, they are pretty separate. And for instance, you can use the the layout uh, completely in XML. You don't have to use the UI builder. Uh, but the UI builder was critical when we started uh, this effort because the, the idea in general was to to create a new layout that was really um, allowing us to build a nice UI builder. Um, and it's kind of you know, it goes both ways. Like the capacity, the capabilities of the layout allowed us to build a, a nice UI builder, and vice versa. Some of the UI builder stuff, you know, also seeped into what we wanted uh, uh, to. You know, the, it helped drive, you know, what we wanted to have in the layout. Um, so that's the why. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is basically, it's uh, it's a more flexible layout. Uh, we can think about it that way. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I was actually pretty excited when constraint layout came out because I feel like it takes relative layout kind of to the next level where you can specify relationship and the engine can kind of work out how things should be. But kind of the next question I had when I tried to use it was, all right, that's my understanding of what this thing is. But I feel like because of kind of the, the relationship between XML and the editor, I don't really understand how I'm supposed to approach this. Like, mm -hmm. like you were mentioning, right? Um, if I am just new to Android, I started with this beautiful UI editor and I drag things in and then it just works itself yeah. up. It's great. But as someone who has been doing Android for a while, I'm always, every time I try to use constraint layout, I will, for example, maybe I will like take an existing layout and then click convert, and it's all nice and pretty. And the moment I start touching it, then things just like, I don't understand, what am I supposed to do? So how do you actually envision kind of both set of users interacting with constraint layout? Well, actually, we, we anticipate a wide, wide variety. And, and we actually study, we do user studies to see what people do. And it's amazing how different everybody does it. It's some people will lay out everything perfectly on the screen, and then hit inference. Some people will lay out everything and then connect one by one. You know, others might put one 
and then connect, one, then connect. So it, we, we actually try to have it work in all possible ways. Uh -huh. So it's, it, it's designed to be flexible in your usage. It's designed to support XML as well, and we, we discuss that and argue about it all the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I am cheating. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's not, but I often end up just going back to the XML and just doing it by hand because what happened is I usually only use uh, constraint layout when I cannot do the same thing with the all existing layout. So by definition, I'm getting into complicated situation just yeah. from the get-go, right? So I will lay things out. Um, so I wrote a blog post, um, in case people have not seen it yet, that is a three-view thing. So it's not I, in my mind, not, not too complicated, but everything is dependent on each other. So the, there's two text view that um, is one on top of each other, and that, that determines the size of the image. So I try to drag things on, and then the moment I try to link, have I think, is it called a chain? Like have things have interdependent? It just blow up on, in my face, and I was I know what I want. I want this to be on top of that, and that to be on that side. At least the XML arch attributes are super easy to understand. It literally says, top to the bottom of something. Yeah. So what should I do in that case? Like, should I insist on using the graphical layout and, and tell you, since it's still in beta and you are constantly improving it, tell you that I want to do that, but I don't understand how to do it, or I should just be at peace that it's OK. I will use XML. I'm not cheating. It's fine. Well, I don't think uh, using XML is cheating. You okay, know? It's, uh, it's fine, you know. And uh, XML is going nowhere. You know, we it it will still be supported uh, as far as I can see in the future. Um, the the UI editor is here to help you visualize the layout, and uh, we we have a lot of we really think we can do uh, we can build a much better experience for the developer in terms of uh, how to build a layout, um, tweak a layout, uh, change things, you know? Uh, and, and we think uh, that we will be able to basically do or deliver an experience that's much better, you know, for you. And that means much more efficient, you know, you'll be able to do it faster. Are we there yet? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> not. Uh, it's still a work in progress. And I think um, uh, the 2.2, Android 2.2, uh, Studio 2.2 release, um, make it uh, usable in a wide variety of cases, but there are still definitely some cases where it's it's it could be a bit uh, rough under the edges. Right. Um, it's also we also added new functionalities in in constraint layout that uh, in 2.2 are, are not supported in the ID. So in that case, you're kind of forced to use XML, right. um, and uh, we are you know, working on 2.3 obviously, uh, and we we think like 2.3 is really going to raise the bar uh, on that. Uh, but that's kind of the gist. That we want to build a nice experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, that Constraint Layout will allow us to do that. And it's not that we you know we are like oh you have to use the UI editor. The it's it's kind of a competition between. If you are fast in XML, this is our baseline. You know, we are not going to say, "Oh, don't use XML." And right. No, we know that people are using XML, and that's 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 the baseline. And uh, we think we'll be able to do better. Mm. Um, oh. You'll you'll also notice that we released two point three in Canary. Um, yes, that was Friday. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. very recently. Um, and so, if you actually use that one, you'll see a lot of the things that you were trying to do. It, they actually work properly now. Yay! <laughs> um, it's exciting actually to be a part of the process, right? Because yeah. I yeah. tried it and I'm like, this doesn't work. And they're like, well, now it works. Yay. So thank you so much. And one of the things that I'm surprised at, you know, this is my first experience working uh, sort of behind uh, to help developers, right. is how much interaction we have with the developer community. Mm -hmm. We're actually, watching everything you all post, everything <laughs> everybody posts, yeah. um, trying to get feedback, what are we doing right, what are we doing wrong? Right. And yes. I, I think that's, that's really important. I think that's something that actually, as I've been following Constraint Lab, that has made me really happy as a developer, is that both of you are really responsive. Like, I've seen you take questions, I see you answer questions, you know, when people complain about things that don't work or ask like very specific questions about I did A, B, C, and D, why isn't X and Y and Z happening? The, uh, both Nicola and John have been so like responsive and yeah. really trying to make it. So I mean, like, I think that's definitely a credit to you as well. And I think it's just something that is really interesting because you've released like 10, 11, 12 releases since <laughs> yeah. 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 which was yeah. by the way, like in May. So yeah. like, yeah. I, I think like, why as you said, it's a work in progress and 
some of us not, might not be happy with w- the way that certain things are working, but that it's like a very kind of, it definitely is a work in progress and that they are doing specific work on it. And that like, if you want something like different or if you're seeing something, then, you know, obviously there's these two very nice gentlemen that you can bug, which is, is really yeah. great. Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, for, for us, it's, uh, well, one, it's actually really fun to interact with the developer community, right? It's uh, it's nice because, you know, you write something and uh, when you push it to developers, uh, you know, you get all this really amazing feedback mm-hmm. and that's, you know, very re- rewarding for us. Right. Uh, but, but also, um, we really, we really approach it as developer ourselves. Uh, as we mentioned before, we, we wrote uh, uh, like the photo editor, for instance, which has a full-blown application on, on its own. And uh, we are, you know, we are not a, a separate type. You of feel developer. our pain. You know, <laughs> exactly. You know, we, we, we had this experience. Yeah. So, and, and really where, where we want to go and is really, you know, making things much faster, much more easy for people to develop uh, Android application, particularly on the graphical side. Um, so yeah, and, and, and I think like listening to the de- developers mm-hmm. for us, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really critical. You know, it's Great. something that we're really looking forward to. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. also why we, we did all those different releases yeah. because we are trying to iterate mm-hmm. and, uh, and to re- iterate as fast as we can. And, and gathering feedback is, is what allows us to, you know, to focus on, on the important stuff. Right. So that's why we need, you know, people's help. <laughs> yeah. If, if you, if you are know. frustrated about something, yeah. don't frustrate in the corner of your room, actually yeah. let people no, know and see, things uh, will get better. They made a feature for me, but well, not really. <laughs> no, for sure. Uh, yeah. File bugs, you know, uh, code.google.com and I uh, promise you we read those bugs really carefully. <laughs> So Juan actually gave a talk on constraint layout a while, but not a while back, like just a couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago. And uh, uh, she got lots of different questions about constraint layout. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting because the, the questions followed very distinct themes. And I think I had four different people ask me about animations. And I, I think people feel that constraint layout is something kind of new and magical and, and will it work the way that we expect it? So I figured since we have Nicola and John, I can ask the source directly. Um, so in regards to animations and transitions, do they work as we would hope and they And are they work? efficient? Are they efficient on con- yeah. with constraint layout? Yes. Actually, they're very efficient. They, they work a lot better at the animations. And we're excited about what we can do with them going forward. Uh, you will see some posts fr- from us about it in the next few weeks. Um, <laughs> as that uh, we'll try and explain a little bit. Yeah. Of, of, well, of I think part of it is, at least in my mind, is like there is this cursory like engine equation solving <laughs> thing. <laughs> so I'm imagining like equations being solved every time like uh, no, something no, moved no. on screen, which is why no. so, so it sounds so the, like it's not efficient. Yeah, and then that's uh, you know that's. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely something you could fear as a, as right. a developer. Where, where you know, okay, you say that it's good, but what are the performances and the yeah. performance impact? Uh, well, first of all, in terms of animation and the type of animation you do, you do on Android uh, with layout transitions, uh, we are constraint layout is just a view group, right? It's exactly just a normal view group. Right. So the type of transition and the automatic transition that you do with you know begin transition, mm-hmm. it's the same. Just do that and it works, you know. Uh, and so in terms of the computation, um, it's we are basically doing the work of figuring out the layout at one time. Mm-hmm. Then you change whatever parameters mm-hmm. and you say begin transition. And then we do it a second time, and uh, the the framework is going to do the interpolation into those. Ah. So there is no there is no constraint layout involved at all during animating between. So so it's basically constraint layout that looks like this, and constraint layout that looks like that, yes. and then the frame wise thing has nothing yes. to do with constraint layout. Exactly. Uh, that said, you know. yeah. uh, there is a, a couple of things uh, that that we think will make your life easier if you are doing animation mm-hmm. with constraint layout. Uh, one is that uh, you tend to be able to create flat hierarchy, which is really nice when you are animating stuff. I mean, if you're animating something that is done, the hierarchy, and then you might have issues with clipping. Uh, performances actually might be a problem because it would regenerate a lot of invalidation. Mm-hmm. If things are flat, and that's true for anything, but you know, constant layout will let you do that more easily. If things are flat, well, you don't invalidate all the things, you know. So that's better. And um, I mean, do you want to talk about constraint set? Yeah. So, uh, so one of the cool things yeah. that we have is constraint set, which allows you to capture a layout and easily apply it. So you don't actually have to switch layouts. You can just apply one set of constraints to a layout and then apply another one as their constraint sets. 
That allows you to animate with very few lines、oh, of code. So I have the same exact views, but you'd say that your relationship changed, and then you can't、yes. yeah. rearrange things. Yeah. So, sounds exciting. And, and it actually works really well from a developer point of view because you sort of just design the layout. You make a copy of it. You design the second layout. You just rearrange everything, and now you capture the constraint set from one and apply it to the other, so that it works. It's easy to go back and then change the designs of each of the two layouts. It works very well.、Yeah. And what's nice as well is that you you are completely in charge in terms of、uh, when do you decide to actually load the XML file.、Um, you know when is when when is there a memory a memory allocation or stuff like that because you can basically prepare those constraint sets. Ahead of time when you need it,、mm -hmm. and、uh, then when you need it, you just apply them. Yes, please write a blog post about that.、Yeah. That sounds amazing. <laughs> that really sounds amazing.、Uh, you released that just very recently, right? Since like maybe nine or ten or something like that. Yeah. It's, yeah. Been, it's no, so like so just again, this things are happening. New tools and new players,、yeah. new, new things、yeah. to play with. Yeah, we we were kind of falling behind on, on our <laughs>、oh, posting. We're not complaining. <laughs> no, we just we just we're like. I, we're just excited that all these things are happening, and want, we want more people to know about yeah. them. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's an example actually of、uh, why we did the constraint layout. Is、uh, one of the reason is we we release it、uh, as a support library kind of,、right. uh, which is nice because、uh, you know first it's just a small library. It's like、uh, the last version is 130 kilobytes, so it's not going to really be a huge problem for you.、Mm -hmm. uh, but what's great with it is that one. Uh, when we push something, you can get it instantly. It works on you know old version of Android, and it works the same. So you know that when you develop from one version, you, you know you don't、uh, you don't have to check all the versions in between. It will work the same.、Uh, but you are also in control because you know if for whatever reason we release a new version that's completely bugged, <laughs> what does it ever happen? I'm going back to、um, Alpha six. <laughs> <laughs> you are the one as、Beta、developer. <laughs> So, so you you decide when to use and when to switch to the next version.、Yeah. So that's really nice. Like the power, you know, the ball is in your、uh, is in your court.、Mm -hmm. uh, but what's cool from our perspective is that we can therefore add new features. We are not stuck into a set of features. And constraint set is one of those features we we thought about. We had no time to implement before. And、right. yeah, around I think Alpha nine maybe we、yeah. were like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, great. So. Thank you so much for for joining us. I mean, like obviously, I was excited about constraint layout because I did a talk on it. But I mean, I think it's something definitely worth trying. And it it feels like almost you're trying to push us to kind of think about building like layouts in different ways and giving us more tools. I mean, like, and I I think that's something definitely worth trying. And obviously, if you have any questions or perhaps bugs, then again. Don and Nicola are right here. Yeah, yeah. right here, right now. But so, also, so how do we people find you on the internet if they want to get in touch? Probably the best way is Twitter, actually. Yeah.、Uh, um, Hofford at Twitter, John Hofford. Okay.、Uh, yes, I think Twitter is probably、uh, pretty responsive. Google Plus,、uh, Stack yeah, Overflow,、um, you know, code.google.com if for finding bugs. Okay.、Uh, we, are, we are trying to be pretty easy to reach. Cool. So we'll add all the links. Yeah, all the links and all the, all the things. Notes, so you can choose your way of reaching these、yes. two lovely people. Great. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, much for getting on. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And well, thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.